Daddy Mictarius, November 2023, what's coming in for you? We are going to look at love, life, destiny, career, channeled messages, all that good stuff. First of all, I'm going to start with a couple of energy cards for you. Got a weird bit of hair there. What's going on there? Do you ever wake up with like a random bit of hair that just insists on going the wrong way? Yes. Okay. Oh, Saggy. That's an interesting card for you. Let's see what goes with it. You may be feeling like quite keen about something at the moment, like you've got a real got to get this done, got to get this done type feeling. The universe has different plans by the look of your overall energy card. Yeah. You're going to be, or as you come in to November, we come from obviously October, and on the 28th of October, there's a lunar eclipse. It might not have even happened yet, depending on when I get this video out. There's a lunar eclipse in Taurus, and it's a bit destabilizing because what it's doing is it's getting, because it's Scorpio season as well, and Taurus is the opposite sign to Scorpio, it's looking very deeply into our lives and what we're doing and it's cleansing us of the things that we're putting loads of effort into but perhaps aren't the greatest for us, okay? Now, you may have a project on the go or it's a new relationship on the go. Something's got you Sagittariusly excited, you know? When a Saggy gets excited, it's brilliant, you know? It's all that enthusiasm and the freedom of it and the bravery just to get on with it and do it. But the universe, Knight of Pentacles. Now, we know what the Knight of Pentacles is. Who's that guy you sit next to in the pub who says, would you like to see my coin collection? You know, that kind of thing. It's the fire warden at work. It's the person who's really careful, the person who says, don't rush things. You have that person telling you not to rush things. And it might make you feel a bit torn in two directions because you want to rush things, because you're excited. And often the modus operandi of a Sagittarius is to rush things when they're excited and usually it has very good results because of all the signs you're ruled by Jupiter, which is a planet of luck. And you're very good on your hunches. You're very good on your haunches. And when you get cracking, it's like, woohoo. And the universe goes, yeah, let's go for Sagittarius. But right now the universe is like, oh, I've got eyeliner on my hand. Look at that. Oh my God. The universe isn't like that. The universe is just saying to you, stop. Okay. Have you checked everything? Have you dotted every I? Have you crossed every T, all that kind of good stuff, okay? And it's gonna feel a bit frustrating, but something about these double checks and this hanging back and this making sure is a very good thing, okay? I promise you. Then we have the chariot as your overall energy as you come into the month. Two horses trying to rush in different directions. And the charioteer, which is you in this case, just wanting to keep that show on the road. There is dissent, okay, in your internal workings. Part of you wants to go this way, part of you wants to go that way. This struggle is good because in this struggle you get even more creative and you create more things and you think of more things but it might just be a little bit, you can't work out why one day you're feeling this, the next day you're like, nah, I was all wrong about that, I'm feeling this. Go with it. You're very good, you're a mutable sign, you're very good at going with things. Go with it. Chop and change with it. Two horses, two different directions, you don't care, you're still in the chariot. You know, if you try and superimpose your will on it too much, you may find the horses all just split and you, the chariot, you know, topples over, okay? So new and exciting things are in the off, but boring things <laughs> are holding it back. My midheaven is in Sagittarius, so I totally sympathise with you. Um, I'm exactly the same as well. When I get an idea, I kind of need to act on it very quickly before it melts, you know, it's just the way it is. And it normally has really good consequences. 
it's just something about that eclipse on the 28th just knocked everybody into a different shape you know let's have a look at what the first week of november is going to bring you oh my god well go big or go home isn't it really might as well just show you that one right now the tower and that oh, tastes went really weird I don't know what this is about. Leave me a comment, let me know if you have a thought. So I'm out looking at the sea today. Um, the camera's pointing backwards, because if I do it that way, the light doesn't work, which is really annoying. But I'm looking at the sea, it's quite kind of rough, and there's some boats bobbing around. And as I look in the sky, there's all these birds wheeling. It's quite stormy here at the moment. They're wheeling around in different directions, exactly like that. Isn't that weird? Anywho, right, first week of November, following that 28th of October eclipse, you've got big stuff going on. Big jobs, what I call spiritual big jobs. Something's happening, okay? Something's happening. Let's get another card to go with it. I like the dynamic of the fire because this is enthusiasm and passion but it is the tower, so we have to take heed that that is something coming in from left field. Oh my, oh my God. Right, okay, this sets up the month nicely. You get the death card with the tower. Right, you have a really big, what is the word I'm looking for? Situation coming up. The tower and the death card together are really clear. There's no sugar coating that that is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's the tower and the death card. The tower is what you thought you knew we burned to the ground. And the death card is absolute change from the bottom up. Literally. I feel like that chariot that we start the reading with, you know how the horses are going in two different directions? And you know how that boring old knight of pentacles with his um, lovely tash there is urging you to kind of be slow and gradual and incremental. I feel like you are picking up intuitively on what this tower is going to bring and knowing that you need to get your ducks in a row for when it happens. Because if you charge ahead too quickly without thought with something, could be a relationship, we'll look at your love life in a minute, um, could be your life, your career, whatever, you'll be pushing in the wrong direction. The universe wants a big change for you this month. Now, personally, I think this is gonna be good because, um, we had a lot of stagnant readings for you for about six months, which is just not very Sagittarian. It was like, where's all this coming from? This watch and wait and king of swords and people interfering and legal things and all that horrible stuff that normally you don't really get involved in has been clogging you up. You've had like your feet in the sinking mud. So I'm glad that there is a change, but at the same time, by gum. You know, that's a lot, isn't it? Nothing you can't handle though, to be honest. And looking at the cards I just pulled for week two, I'm not too bothered, that's really good. Okay, so something a bit big coming in and absolute change with the death card. Then week two, we get peace. You make peace with it as you should after a storm. You know, the tower is like a storm. It's the sort of weather destroyer. The roofs of the buildings are gone. The things are burnt. You know, it's scorched earth. And that scorched earth is then the death card where there's like, the, I feel like I'm channeling the landscape and the landscape has been completely changed. And then you almost wake up and sort of sniff the air and feel the grass and think, where am I now? What's happening now? Where am I going next? I thought it was going in this direction, but it's not. It's in a whole different direction. And I need to prepare myself for this. 
So you make peace with the direction you then find yourself in. And it's very important that you do this because Sagittarians are master manifestors. You know, whether you're into it or not, whether you know it or not, you are master manifestors. It's easy for you to manifest and it's easy for you to change tack on that because you're mutable. You're ruled by Jupiter. You've got all the right ingredients to bake a manifestation cake. But in order to manifest, you've got to feel okay with where you are, no matter what. And that's what this card is saying as we enter the second week of November. You find a way. You find a place, you find a way, you find a place to make it okay with yourself. God, I was almost gonna rhyme then, but I caught myself just in time. Okay, so we have peace, four of swords. You find your way, you're like, okay. I just rhymed again. And then you get the ace of cups. I wasn't expecting that. Ace of cups, gorgeous energy. Now, primarily the Ace of Cups starts with self-love. So whatever happens with the Tower, with the Death card, you are rebuilding yourself into self-love, okay? So there, I always think of it like you're filling up the fountain with your own love, which spills out onto others and makes you magnetic, okay? So we have this self-love card. It's also the beginning of new love. It's very important that we know that it starts with you, but it can also indicate uh, all kinds of things actually, like love at first sight, I'm getting, because we've got the tower and the death card, a massive upgrade in a relationship. I would normally say possibly you end a relationship, but I'm not getting those vibes or the cards to support that you literally get a huge upgrade in your relationship with yourself, but I think some of you also, there could even be like a proposal or, you know, taking things to the next level. It's very nice and it couldn't have happened without the tower and the death card. And that's why Mr. Stamp Collector, the coin man here, the fire warden, that's why he was saying, cool your jets, missy. Just hold on a minute now. He might not have put it like that, but that's what I'm kind of interpreting him as saying. Okay, exciting. Certainly isn't going to be boring, is it? Very nice. Week three. Week three and in walks the King of Pentacles. I like this. If this is about love, and we'll have a look in a minute at your love life, then this is fantastic. Because as a Sagittarian, you need a lot of freedom in a relationship, full stop. But you also benefit from someone who is very grounded, that will hold the space for you to run around in. You need to go off in all different directions. You need to be getting different ideas, meeting different people, feeling different things processing it, synthesizing it, living your best life. And you need someone who's a bit of a rock, who can just support you in this, you know, and just be there and be reliable. And the King of Pentacles is just that person. This is someone who is reliable, consistent, and as my mum says, got a knob, a bob and a job, okay, which is a score. He does what he says he's going to do. He doesn't move quickly. He doesn't change quickly. He's the king of pentacles. It's like, here I am. My throne is nice. I'll probably use carpenter and built it himself, you know, sanding down a bit of beechwood here. And then even, you know, he's even got a good beard. It's just, he knows who he is. He's not uber exciting. He's not uber spectacular. He's not mad, bad and dangerous to know, but this is somebody who is solid. If this isn't romance, this is a best friend or a very generous boss. Sometimes the King of Pentacles can, because he's got the money, can represent a person who holds your money. Can be a bank manager if they even have those anymore, a boss or just somebody who is, 
happy to support you. And I love this for you at the moment. And it comes with the Three of Cups. So for some of you, you may get a new boss at work, you may get a new work group, you may get a new sense of fitting in and loyalty and all of that good stuff. For others of you, if this is romance, then that is someone who's loyal to you. They're loyal to your cause, which is very important because Sagittarians have a cause. You don't always know what it is, but you're always acting on something. And you like movement, you like freedom, and you like change. This is a good person to come back to. Then we enter week four. Oh, I'm liking, I like the evolution of your reading. You know, I'm not saying that it's the easiest, but it's going in the right direction, thank God. Week four, in walks the Queen of Wands. I think that's you, because obviously you are the fire sign and you find your power and you needed to. It's where you can work out now what's happened with the tower, what's happened with the chariot. You can work out all of this hullabaloo that was happening in the past. You can see why and where it's going and you're ready to be your forceful diva self. I love this for you. It's fantastic. And it didn't come from nowhere. You, you know, you've, you've put up with a lot in the earlier part of the month. There's a lot of change, there's a bit of turmoil, you know, you've had to recalibrate. So yeah, yeah, you're turning up as the Queen of Wands with a really good ribbony stick and an excellent dress, an absolutely fantastic tiara crown thing. Love me a tiara crown thing. And you also get the Two of Wands making a decision. You're making a decision here by fighting it out almost with yourself. This could be about where you're going to live next, where you're going to move next, what you're going to do next, your next creative endeavor. Love this for you. Fantastic. It's the way you like to do things that two of wands. It's a bit bombastic. It's a bit, um, let's thrash this out. But you're also going to find in November that there are like-minded people around you, maybe literally or online or whatever, or your friends, who are happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you and feel your passion and your ideas, okay? Which is great. Let's have a look at your love life. Mm-hmm. Give them a quick shuffle. So if this resonates with you, Saji, there will be an extended reading following this in not very long's time. Did that even make sense in not very long's time? It's quite early when I'm making this. I'm still half asleep. Uh, in the extended reading, I look at your love life in depth and at the cards that have come up in this reading, I'll be looking at the tower, I'll be looking at death, I'll be looking at the Ace of Cups and the cards I'm about to pull now. We, we get other decks out and we channel messages from your person and ask, how do they feel about you? Oh, God, that's strong. Okay. First off in your love life, we've got the High Priestess there is a need for you to use your nous, for you to use your feminine energy knowledge. This is not evidence-based knowledge. This is knowledge of the moon, the knowledge that you've gained from the eclipse on the 28th of October, this kind of plumb line that you have of intuition, you know, moving down, and hunches, you really need to act on your intuition and your hunches in your love life at the moment. And your hunches and your intuition may directly defy your logic, okay? Think of one as logic and the other as intuition. You somehow have to ride two horses with one backside and keep logic and intuition in, in check 
because you need both of them at the moment. But when you get the High Priestess, this is reminding you that you already know what you need to know, okay? And then we get the Hanged Man. Neptunian energy. And the Hanged Man is also a card of pause, a card of stop a while. You know, just feel where you're going. Feel how you feel about this. Check in with yourself. Don't rush forward. It's a big message from the universe. Even the King of Pentacles is someone who can't be rushed. That you will want to rush, but you shouldn't rush in November for whatever you're doing. Oh, wow. Some of you are getting a great big fat love offer in November, sure as God made little apples, as they say. Yeah, absolutely, and it's decent as. Okay, you get the Knight of Cups coming in. When you get the Knight of Cups, this is, this is a love offer, basically. This is your love life that we're looking at at the moment. The Knight comes in, he's got his excellent headband you know, he's got really nice clothes on, a bit of a silky sash, shawl thing, a cape. Love me a cape. Nobody really wears capes anymore, do they? Well, he does. And he's got the Ace of Cups there to offer to you. This is somebody, again, who's levelling up. Levelling up to make an offer. And I like this energy for you. It's exciting. And, you know, like L'Oreal says, you're worth it. You are. And with it, and I particularly like that we get this card with it, we get the Ace of Pentacles. Now, I have a saying, like, have you, can you bite the coin? In other words, is it counterfeit? And when it comes to, like, the King of Pentacles, yes, it's always the real thing. But this is the same. This bull is biting the coin and it just goes to show the Ace of Pentacles is, yes, it has a good foundation. Yes, it has something solid at the heart of it. And I'm really pleased for you because that isn't the way necessarily that you are. But if you're going to be in union with somebody, it's very helpful if they are like that. I mean, all of us mutable signs, which I'm one too, in our youth, we've done our bit with the mad, bad and dangerous to know people and it's exciting and it's changeable and, you know, the adrenaline and the cortisol are pew, 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 pew. But how did it end? Not well, usually. And when you get a bit older, your requirements change. Yes. Okay. Belinda Grace love card. You get manifestation. You've been doing a lot of manifesting and it is paying off. And make sure you keep it up. Keep doing those manifestations because you're on it. It's working. It's a yes. And I love this for you. This is one of the best readings you've had in ages. Oh God, of course you'd get that card. Wow, I've just got to cover a couple of bits up because of YouTube. You get the soulmates card. Yeah. I know soulmates is a bit of a cheesy concept, but I'm seeing a whole lot of love in this reading. I'm seeing a whole lot of proposal. I'm seeing a whole lot of let's take it to the next level, the whole bit. Oof, this is going to be interesting. The distorted masculine. Now, some of you are clearing out at the same time. And this may come up when you take pause because I was doing those readings for you over the past few months and this King of Swords kept coming up and the distorted masculine kept coming up. Somebody who was a bit bullyish somebody who was um, pressing your buttons or just trying to keep you down, take you down a peg or two. Could be a boss, could be an ex, could be anyone. 
So that might need dealing with just in the first couple of weeks while you make peace. It could even be like if you've been separated, it could be your divorce comes through with the tower. You know, there's something that breaks free of that. Now, I think you're just going to deal with that in due course. For some part with the chariot, you've got this wonderful future here, this wonderful upgrade of a love relationship and you've got these difficulties and you're dealing with two things at once. But the whole month you're dealing with two things at once and you're a mutable sign so it doesn't matter okay in terms of manifestation focus on the good outcome you already know that but i'm just here to remind you because you've got so much going here ace of cups soulmate card three of cups knight of cups and then you coming up as the queen of wands at the end Sagittarius. I'm going to go and do the extended reading. We are going to look at the Tower, the Death card, the Knight of Cups, your love life, your person, how do they feel about you and the shadow side. I know. If you're up for that, grab a drink and I'll see you in a minute. It's the first link in the description box. Otherwise, leave me a comment, okay? I love to read all my comments and I try and reply to as many as I can. And I'll see you soon. See you on the other side. Namaste.